Hello, and welcome to another iClone 7 Academy tutorial. Today's topic will be converting legacy models that have traditional shaders into PBR ones. We all have content from previous iClone packages that we would love to bring over to the brand new rendering engine. And this is what this tutorial is all about. You will notice, I'm going to select this model here, which is uh, one from, I believe, iClone 4. Four or five, I can't remember. And um, most of those models, they only came with just one texture, which is the diffuse map. And in that map, they tried to describe all the properties of that particular gun. Let's take a closer look in Photoshop so you can see what I'm talking about. In here, you can see that this uh, gold alloy in here, they were trying to describe it as very shiny. And the reason I know that is because they actually painted highlights on the texture itself to represent that. As you can see here on all the golden parts. There's always a very hot specular in it. Where the barrel part uh, of the gun is, is, is described as much duller because the light is very diffuse on, on the particular metal. And of course the wood which is, it has wood grain and it has a little bit of highlighting there to show that it's, it's a little bit shiny but not too shiny because it's worn, worn out. And they did a fantastic job. However, with PBR we can actually make those materials look like they should. And this is how you do it. Just follow a very few simple rules and you'll be doing great in no time. So the first thing you have to ask yourself is, is it metal or not? So we look at the gun over here is, well, uh, more than half is metal, but the handle is wood, so it is not. So how do we describe that in a single texture? All right, so let's take a look at what I did over here. Now, take a closer look at the metallic. I'm going to send it over to Photoshop here by clicking on this button. I'm going to expand it over there. So all I did here is I selected the area and I'm going to go ahead and just bring a, a quick mask that I already created so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go wood and go OK. So I selected this area over here, isolated it. And basically, uh, out of this completely white map that I had originally, actually metallic was comes in black. So the first thing I did is I flooded this with white. And then I go ahead and paint it this area in black, representing the uh, non-conductive material, which is, was the wood part. This is where the air, this is the area of the wood. And everything else I left away because I want it to be metal. So that was the first step. The next question you need to ask yourself is: Is it shiny or is it dull? Okay. Well, in the material. In here, they're trying to depict the golden uh, alloys to be very shiny because of the specular that they actually painted on the texture itself. Whereas the barrel of the gun is more like iron or cast iron. So they want that to be much duller. So in order to do this, what I did, and I'm going to show you here inside Photoshop as well. I started off with this image over here and I turn it into a grayscale. Very simple uh, image adjustment. I went to hue saturation here and I just took the saturation out completely just like that. And then what I did is I started creating contrast. I crank out the contrast and once I got, I got halfway through I started using my dodge and burn tool to make areas darker or lighter. So again, when you're dealing with roughness, darker means shinier, where lighter means much uh, duller. So what I did here is all of those uh, uh, golden alloy uh, metals, I, I darkened them quite a lot. So we got this really nice and shiny feel to it on the gold side of it. See how you glints as we go, as I move around the camera. And... Uh, for the dull part, 
of course, it, they, they became, I painted those uh, much lighter so that those, like the gun barrel stuff, and, and they wouldn't handle. So let me show you here what I mean by um, using the, uh, the uh, darken, uh, the um, burn, and uh, the, uh, uh, the, the dodge brush here. So I'm going to use the burn brush right now for the handle. So notice here, you will see, let me put this side by side so you can see this. I'm going to go ahead and put the wooden handle on the side there and I'll get that hot <laughs> glare off of our faces. So, okay, let's bring back Photoshop here. And what I'm going to do here is show you how by using the burn tool right now, we're going to select the area of the handle and just paint over it so that it, it, the... Uh, the uh, gray areas actually get darkened. So as soon as I do that, I can go ahead and just press Control S to save it. And, and this is just in Photoshop. In your other packages might be something different. So very simple. Now take a look at the handle over here as soon as I press save, okay? So I press S, say okay. See, it just became much, much shinier over there. So it has some kind of lacquer to it to make it shine. If you don't like it, of course, it's very simple. You just go back to Photoshop and just undo that last step you did over here. Just drag it out, save it again, Control S, and then you're back to normal over, over there. So it's that simple. So you can easily put your, your Photoshop and your iClone side by side, and you can totally see as you work what the changes are. So that's a, a good uh, uh, workflow right there to, for you to, to keep in mind. Because you see, the once you press that save button, the action is immediate. So you, you, you totally can see how those changes affected your model. Okay, so next the next question I ask myself is, does it have any relief that is actually uh, uh, very visible? And by that, I mean, uh, is the surface like extremely bumpy uh, like sandpaper or or is the surface very smooth or does it have scratches you know all of this stuff is something that cannot be described with roughness alone you actually need to create some kind of uh, height map or relief map or what is called a bump map or a normal map and this is what this is uh, all about so I'll show you what I did here so for the uh, Golden Island part, I just made it completely black because I want that to be perfectly smooth. I didn't want any scratches or anything. I just wanted a little bit of, of course, dirt that has been accumulated for a little while. That's all. But it's still, overall, it's, it's, it's very, very shiny uh, material, as you can see here. You can see some very, very nice highlights and reflectiveness to it. Whereas the inside the iron part, as you can see here, it has this bump detail, bumpy detail there, that uh, this is being created by the bump map. And actually, bump map has a lot more influence on PBR than other uh, traditional shading. So it really, really adds that extra feel of, of reality to the material because it takes us in consideration when it's calculating uh, those surfaces. So that's definitely something for you to keep in mind. So obviously here, if you know, just as you can see here, everything else was left in grayscale suit so to represent this. Of course, you can make the indentations on the on the pattern more pronounced simply by I don't know. Just uh, I have like let's load a mask here just to show you real quick and select the iron part of it. Go OK. So I have uh, all my iron pieces uh, selected here, and uh, I don't know. Just um, add some levels to it just to show you, you know, how you can increase the bumpiness to something. For example, so we can make this like so. Increase the brightness, and uh, by changing the levels one way or another then you can create a bit more contrast overall and uh, just press OK. This is just an example, doesn't really matter. Um, so again, you can put things side by side if you want to so you can see uh, both at the same time here. So let me just grab this 
and move it over there actually down here and I'm going to press Control S to save and there you go you, there's the change right there so like you, like you can see it, it does make a very very big difference okay so finally but not least is the base color uniform now again in the old days they had to represent all the materials with a single texture however that is not necessary anymore so um, in order uh, to to represent what, my, what the materials actually look like, they had to paint all the lighting on the on the texture itself. And uh, for PPR, actually, that is not the best that's not the best way to do it. You want to make the materials uh, look uniform with the texture that it has. The texture is fine. Leave the texturing, but try to remove all the highlights from that uh, base color, and you will get even better results out of the PBR system. However, as you can see here, if you leave them there and if they're still there, it really doesn't break them. It, it will still work, not as good as if you make them uniform, but it still works and it still looks very, very good. So uh, this is something you know, you know I wanted for you to keep in mind. So if you want the optimal results, paint the highlights out of your textures uh, when you're using, using them for base color stuff. Okay? All right. So one more thing here is um, some models come with what is called overlapping UVs. And this is something you, you need to think about. The reason I'm mentioning this is because if you're doing, dealing with text, so let's say I wanted to brand my, let's, let's put this in the roughness channel. I wanted to brand this, uh, this gun with my name on it. So I'm going to go ahead and click in here and uh, say stock on 3D. All right, so I'm going to go ahead now and move this uh, to center it a little bit better, like that. Next, you need to rasterize this text layer and then just uh, flatten it. And now I'm going to go ahead and save this. Control S. All right, so look what happened now on our icon. We have the edging or engraving there, but it's inverted. It looks correct from this angle but it doesn't look correct from this one so you need to know which way is the straight way on your actual texture map if, if you have overlapping UVs so in our case it's reversed so what we need to do here is instead of um, once you type in the uh, the name that you want you have the text that you want in there like so all right, you can go ahead and just uh, let's grab this text. Actually, you, once you create the text, you press Control T, and I'm just going to invert the text like that. Okay, so let's put about one. It doesn't need to be perfect. About there, that looks good. Now I'm going to press Enter, and I'm going to move this back in here. And now, same step. I'm going to rasterize. Merge, flatten, and Control S to save it. So I just sent it to iCloud. See, and now it reads properly, the right way. So know we, we, from which uh, side you're going to be reading that logo that you embed onto your model. And this is only with uh, models that have overlapping UVs. Otherwise, it's not a big deal because uh, you'll be able to put the straight name on both sides. But if you have a, a situation like this one, then just go, just keep that in mind, okay? That's a quick tip from Stock on 3D right there. All right. So this about covers um, the conversion process. I hope you enjoyed it. Until then, have a good night, and I will catch you later.